ان المتقين في مقام نمين في جنات وعيون يلبسون من سندس واستبرق متقابلين عروه بن مسعود ستوري از ريماركبل هي ذن واز اوت اوف ذا بيكتشر ات سم ستيج هي ونت باك تو طائف And after the conquest of Mecca, and I've spoken about this before, when the Prophet ﷺ conquered Mecca al-Mukarramah, after the conquest of Mecca, he then marched against Hawazin and in the Battle of Hunayn. And after the Battle of Hunayn with the Hawazin, he then went on to the city of Ta'if. So Urwat ibn Mas'ud, a thaqafi he... He was the one responsible for directing the defenses of the walled city of Ta'if. And in fact, he himself says, well, it's reported of him that he was absent in the Battle of Hunayn because he feared that the Prophet, he was a, he was a non-Muslim still, he feared that the Prophet وسلم, would march on Ta'if. So in preparation, he had gone somewhere else to study the art of siege warfare. And he was studying manganels, which in Arabic are called the minjaniq. Normally we just, people commonly translate minjaniq as catapult. But catapults were a, much, uh, a different kind. These were manganels. Minjaniq is a manganel. So he was studying the art of siege warfare and siege engines such as the manganels and what we call the caterpillar which is where you've got a group of um, soldiers covered with either not just a single sheet or not just shields but a large triangular uh, engine and often with a battering ram in the middle hanging In Arabic, they call that the Baba. So in modern warfare, they call the Baba a tank. But the word the Baba exists from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these were the caterpillars that were used as siege engines. So he was studying the art, uh, the art of siege warfare and actually siege engines such as the manganel and the caterpillar, etc. Anyway, he then, he was absent at the time of uh, the Battle of Hunayn, but then he... When the Prophet ﷺ laid siege to the city of Ta'if, he had returned and he was in charge of the defenses. And the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba were unable to penetrate the defenses of Ta'if. So they laid siege to the city, uh, some Muslims were martyred, and then the Prophet ﷺ uh, broke the siege and lifted the siege and just left, and he made his way back to Medina. Urwat ibn Mas'ud, approximately a year later, after Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq had returned to Medina from the Hajj of the ninth year, because the Prophet وسلم, stayed in Medina, Abu Bakr was the Amir of the Hajj. A year later from the siege of Ta'if, Ta'if still hadn't become Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts Islam in the heart of Urwat ibn Mas'ud. And he, of his own accord, even though he had successfully defended the walled city of Ta'if, he left Ta'if and traveled to Medina, presented himself to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and embraced Islam. <clears throat> he then said, O Messenger of Allah, allow me to go back to my people and spread Islam amongst them. Prophet Sallallahu said, no, your people will kill you. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, if they find me sleeping, meaning he trusted his people, he said, no, O Messenger of Allah, if they find me sleeping, totally unaware and unalert, they won't even wake me up. They leave me alone. So then he sought permission, the Prophet ﷺ then allowed him to go. So he came back to Ta'if. When he came back to Ta'if, 
since he was one of their leaders, people came to greet him. And remember, what did I say? He was from the Ahlaf, which was the rival sub-tribe of the Banu Malik. Both were from Thaqif. Thaqif is a parent tribe, and the Ahlaf were the rival sub-tribe, and the Banu Malik were the rival sub-tribe. So what happened is, they, when they came to greet him, they all greeted him with the typical greeting of the days of Jahiliyyah. So he said to them, don't greet me in this manner, rather greet me with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So they became angry and they said, he's become a heathen. So they swore at him, they abused him, uh, even though they had come to meet him and honor him, and they plotted against him. At night, he slept. In the morning, he woke up alone, and in the room where he was, he climbed to the roof and he gave adhan for fajr. When he gave adhan for fajr, one of the Banu Malik, he was from the Ahlaf, one of the Banu Malik, the rival sub-tribe, shot an arrow and wounded him fatally. The people gathered. He was on his deathbed in the last throes of life and the people gathered his family and tribe, the Ahlaf, gathered and they said, and they, he was still alive, but he was bleeding to death. And the Ahlaf said, by Allah, we will seek in retaliation for just the life of Urwat ibn Mas'ud, we will seek vengeance in ten lives of the Banu Malik. If he dies. And they knew that he was going to pass away because he was wounded fate and he was bleeding severely. So, Urut ibn Mas'ud was lying there and he said, No, oh my people, listen to me. My blood, my life, I give as sadaqah. So let there be no fighting amongst you for my sake. I forfeit my life. So no one is to claim any retaliation from me. And I believe that this is an honor which Allah has bestowed upon me, that through this I shall bring about peace between my people. Because there were uh, rival sub-tribes. And he said that the Prophet ﷺ foretold this, and he told me that my people would kill me. And I consider this to be shahada in the way of Allah. And I request you that when the Prophet ﷺ laid siege to the city of Ta'if, and remember he was in charge of the defences and some Muslims were martyred, he said, wherever those Muslims who are martyred are buried, bury me amongst them. So he passed away, radiyallahu anhu, he was buried amongst the martyrs of the siege of Ta'if, even though ironically he was responsible ultimately for the defense and therefore the martyrdom of those uh, soldiers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When word reached the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of the passing away of Urmat ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised him and he said, that he is amongst our people like the one of Yasin who was killed. And in Surah Yasin, and a man came from the furthest end of the city, racing, saying to his people, that all oh, my people believe and follow the messengers. And then the verses continue, till the end. And then what happened? He was killed by his own people. And it was said to him before he died, he was shown Jannah. But he, the Prophet وسلم, likened Urwat ibn Mas'ud to the messenger, to the man of Surah Yasin who had invited his people to Islam and to believing, and they had killed him. And that's exactly what happened with Urwat ibn Mas'ud that he invited his people to Islam and to the way of Allah, and they killed him. But what happened later? 
again through his karama and his shahada, all of the people of Ta'if peacefully embraced Islam. And they sent a delegation to the Prophet وسلم, and they pledged their allegiance to him and embraced. Another remarkable thing about Urut ibn Mas'ud is a hadith of Sahih Muslim. Prophet وسلم, says that the Anbiya السلام, was shown to me, and this is a hadith of Sahih Muslim. And he, and he was describing the prophets, and he said, Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salam, Isa, the son of Maryam, he said, he looks like Urwat ibn Mas'ud. So he enjoyed that honor as well of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying that Urwat ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi radiyallahu anhu resembled Isa ibn Maryam in his appearance.